UT Martin football team is uh, having an off week this week. Coach Jason Simpson just makes his way into the studio. Coach, how are you, buddy? Well, good. Just uh, got off practice field and uh, good to be back out there. And a lot of corrections need to be made. And it's good physical practice today. We we, we took the weekend off, so uh, time to get back to work. Uh, different weather than you are experiencing. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, but it warmed up the last ten minutes of practice there. So, uh, um, but it was good. It's a good day to be out there and bounce around. Most definitely. You gave uh, the the players the weekend off. You have the luxury, I guess, doing that with an open week. Yeah, you certainly do. I mean, we got in, I guess, Thursday morning. At, I guess I walked in my front door at 4.40 a.m., and, uh, you know, the kids were expected to, to be in class. Matter of fact, when I left, there were four guys running for missing class on Friday, you know. But if you get in at 4.30, you got to go. And so uh, some didn't, and we're taking care of that. But uh, we came in at 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon Friday and watched the tape and make some corrections and uh, try to put it to bed and get the players off over the weekend and back to work today. Paul was uh, Paul Tinkle, we'll talk about the game in just a minute, was asking me about the uh, kids going to, to class Friday, and that's why you come back that night. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a, and there's a lot of guys took advantage of it and went and had to go, but, you know, the, the professors do not have to excuse you, mm -hmm. okay? They don't have to. Matter of fact, you know, we have a um, a um, an athletic, you know, policy that basically is just a nice form letter that asks for permission, you know, to, uh, to, to or informs the, the professors where we're going and, and who the, this student athlete and these are the dates that they will be out if you could please work with us. And, and most do, and we really do appreciate that. You leave the day before the game. That gives you a chance to kind of get your feet underneath you and get used to your surroundings. Right. You. We left yeah. around noon on Wednesday, and, you know, it was a little over six hours, and uh, we ate uh, when we got there at, at Golden Corral and had meetings that night, and, uh, and kids got to sleep a little bit longer, you know, until about 8.30 on Thursday morning, and then you do your walkthroughs, and then you pregame, and then by then it's time to be ready to get on the bus. And you coach, the game. just for a travel standpoint, and I'm not picking on them by any means, but that's to me the most difficult trip in the OVC. I it mean, is. Even Moorhead State's yeah. four-lane, and you can really sleep, but Jacksonville's not an easy place to get to. And they probably say the same thing about us. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do because, <laughs> uh, you know, but there – you, you can't stay in a town, so you have to stay. If you want a full-service uh, restaurant or hotel, you've got to stay in Oxford, Alabama. Just 20 like, minutes south? or Yeah, it's every bit of probably 20, 25 minutes because there's so many red lights. Yeah. yeah. When you lived there, where mm -hmm. did you live? Did you live in Jacksonville? Right there in Jacksonville. I mean, oh, okay. just two blocks from the stadium there. So, uh, was Cooter Brown still there? Uh, yeah, was Cooter Brown. It, was it still open when we came by? <laughs> yeah. Was oh, it yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Many, you know, many uh, racks of um, slabs of ribs <laughs> in there, too. Uh, Coach, what a game. You certain It's obvious that you were prepared going into the game and, uh, and executed the game plan early. Well, we did. And, uh, you know, the plan going into this game was to uh, – offensively was to uh, – to move around and shift and hide our formations and make them adjust, you know, to where our tight end, the strength of our formations, and then and then to play fast. That's kind of the fad right now in college football, and we've been doing it the last couple of years, and, but not as much to that extent that you saw us do it the other night. And so, uh, you know, and it worked and got off to a good start and, uh, you know, something to build from as far as the tempo of that we played at offensively. You know, when you talk about that tempo and playing fast, you, I think you got to be mentally sharp to be able to do that, and you have to have rehearsed it, I guess, a lot. Well, you do, you know, because, you know, those aren't scripted plays always. I mean, there was a few of them that, you know, certain words are called and, and you know go fast and line up in it and run that particular play. But there's sometimes where we're just calling out a formation and based on the down and distance we're trying to go fast and to run a, a particular play it gets called from the sideline based on the down and distance. So the kids aren't prepared for what comes in. So they've got about, you know, maybe we try to get a play run within 14 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the kids got probably about five seconds to process the play of, of their assignments and what they're supposed to do, and then the ball gets snapped. And where does Derek Carr fit in all this? Well, he's he's, been, he's a very smart individual and, you know, football smart as well. And so, uh, you know, he has to direct the traffic because there's sometimes where we ask him, Hey, go fast, run this play. But if they do this, don't run this play. Yeah. And 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 you know, last year, you know, he could do it uh, to a certain extent, but he's really this year understands what's got to be done, and, and it makes it for a more efficient offense. Let's talk about the first quarter. You scored early, which I always think is a key when you're on a road against a pretty good team on a Tevin Barksdale four-yard run into the end zone. Well, you know what set it up? Uh, we, you know, we start the game in two tight ends, and I think we go for eight yards, and that kind of sets the tempo. Then the next play. You know, Jason McNair takes a stretch zone, and, and really, you know, that's a play. It's an outside zone play to where you really landmark the outside, you know, uh, number or the armpit of the defender, and you really get some stretch by the back. You know, you see the Denver Broncos used to run it a lot, and that's kind of a fad 
inside and outside zone. So Jason did a great job and it was blocked perfectly of really stretching the defenders and getting one cut and getting through the hole. And uh, he did that and he's make a guy miss and he's able to go around 60 yards and get us in the red zone. And, and we played fast once again and we got the little crack toss and uh, Tevin did a nice job running through traffic for the score. Uh, McNair showed us in some last year, but really showed us in the Jacksonville State game that he's potentially a playmaker. I mean, he has well, the capabilities of making big plays. He is. And, I mean, Jason's a – I mean – for my money, he's the best all-around offensive player in this league. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I, I mean, because he can he can be an outstanding wide receiver, he, and he was, <laughs> and, you know, and, and and he did. We lined him up out there, but he's the guy that really seriously can have, you know, my expectations are 150, 175, 200 yards total offense from him a week, uh, each week. We're going to need that from him because he, we've got to get him his touches. Let's talk about his numbers here. Let me find out uh, statistically what he did. Well, I don't have it in front of me, but he did catch the football. And uh, he also uh, ran the football, and he broke some tackles. And, well, and, and one of the things John Abel was talking about as a sideline reporter is that he has that ability to change speeds quickly. No, he does. We kid with him because, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a great illustration, but he's kind of he's kind of like the, the the deer that you know runs through your yard, you know, that you see, <laughs> and you say, you know, you say, man, I could have touched that deer. You know, it was so close, wasn't even running fast. Yeah. <laughs> but in actuality, you really couldn't. That's kind of what Jason is. He just he. He runs just fast enough to, to make a guy miss or, you know, to get yards. And, you know, he, he's not a guy that we're going to have to grind out between the tackles, 25, you know, 25 snaps. That's not his type of run game. But uh, you get him to the perimeter and, uh, you know, he can, he can do some things for us. He led the team with uh, 10 carries for 85 net yards, 92 total gained yards, and then seven catches for 85 yards. So that's the balance that he had there, catching the football and running the football. Right, and that's 16 yeah. touches, and that's probably not enough. He probably yeah. needs to get uh, you know 20 touches each week, and uh, that'll be my goal for the weeks to come. So you take the lead 7 nothing in the first quarter. We go to the second quarter. Cody Sandlin comes out, kicks a 43-yard field goal in a five-play, 21-yard drive. I forget where that – where did that play that – Stall that drive stall. Uh, How did we get down there? By it was quick. I guess we only had one first down. Let me get the go back to the play by play. Because Cody did a great job kicking, but I can't remember exactly the scenario that got us down there. But uh, you know what's disappointing about that is the settling for the field goal. Yes, and we we, we had because we had momentum exactly, and so you know you, you'll take the points and be glad with it. But uh, that's kind of the, um, the story of the game is that we settle for too many field goals against a quality team, and it, it bit us at the end. Jacksonville State bounces back and scores in the second quarter to make it 10-7. You answered almost immediately just four minutes later on a Jarvis Perry 13-yard pass from Derek Carr. Well, let me go back to the, to the seven points by them. If you go back and mm -hmm. look at the play-by-play uh, -play there, we had them to third and 12, and uh, incomplete pass. And we get a rough in the uh, a, a uh, wasn't rough in the pass, or it was a uh, sportsman like personal foul. The game had almost been penalty free up until that point. And you know, and it was it was not a very uh, physical personal foul, mm -hmm. but it was very uh, you know it was stupidity on our part. And Montoya Hughes got it, and and uh, you know he just kind of tapped the guy, and the guy fell over and took a flop, went over. But regardless, we can't be the last one to get the last punch in or the last push in the shove, and it costs us. And then we got another one uh, on the on the touchdown play that, that drive, uh, to where our young sophomore uh, safety had a couple. Uh, we had two busted or busted coverage on that, and and got confused and let a tight end run run free uh, for a touchdown, easy throw for the game ties. Seventeen seven was the score at the half. We'll take a break and come back and talk about the second half as UT Martin falls on the road to Jacksonville State in a heartbreaker, 24-23. Plus more coming up with Coach Jason Simpson tonight on this Labor Day from the studios of WCMT. We'll return in a moment on Skyhawk Talk live from WCMT.